Hello, John Zimmerman from Tablet Class Math, and I put together this quick little video on negative exponents because it's a uh, it's a common area that a lot of algebra students or even high school, middle school, middle school, high school students kind of confuse, and it's an it's important that we um, you know kind of get you really to understand this because negative exponents or even just powers and exponents are everywhere in um, more advanced mathematics. So, what let me kind of give you a couple things to think about why this is important. So, before I um, talk about exponents, I'm going to give you a fraction. So, if I gave you a fraction and it's 30 over 50, and I said, well, here's my answer. Uh, this is my final answer. It's 30 over 50. Would you think that would be kind of like maybe not complete? Would you say, well, that's, you know, just write it as 3 over 5. That's really the correct or fully correct answer, although 30 over 50 is equivalent to 3 over 5. 3 over 5 is mathematically um, how we want to represent this value. Okay, so same thing with exponents. If I gave you, let's say, x over negative 10, in algebra, in mathematics, this is really not complete. Okay, we don't like to leave um, powers with negative exponents. And there's some, yeah, I want to say some technical issues or um, some uh, more complex reasoning behind it, but just just so you know, at this moment, you don't want to leave your final answers with negative exponents. So we have to learn how to rewrite powers that have negative exponents into equivalent uh, powers that have positive exponents, and that's what this rule is all about. In this, you know, this particular video, just going to focus on that. And of course, powers and ex exponents have a lot of different rules. This is only one of them. All right, so here's the rule here. So it's a to the negative n. Some we have some power, um, but the base a to a, a negative exponent negative n. We can rewrite negative exponents as one over a to the n. So when we're given a nice algebraic property or, or law like this, it really doesn't mean a lot unless we have some examples. So let's go ahead and look at uh, a few. So if I have x to the negative 10, okay, to rewrite that, just kind of look at the pattern here. I have a, um, a base to the negative exponent. The rule says we'll just write it as 1 over that power, but the negative exponent goes away. Okay? So let's take a look at another one. Uh, let's see, let's use a number this time. doesn't make a difference if you're using a variable or a number. As long as it's a, a base to a negative exponent, this rule applies. So if I have 2 to the negative fifth, that would be simply 1 over 2 to the fifth. Pretty easy. Let's actually look at another one. How about x plus y to the negative 10? Now in this case, our base, okay, this is the base, okay, the base is just simply something that's a little bit larger, but the property, the rule still works the same. It would just be 1 over this entire um, base, x plus y, okay, gets moved down to the denominator, and the power becomes positive. Okay, so hopefully you can see the pattern here. Pretty straightforward rule when we have a negative exponent that's, you know, that's nice and easy, like x to the negative 10. Now what I want to do is talk about situations where we have like 1 over z to the negative 9, where the negative exponent is in, is in uh, the denominator, okay? Well, to do that, let me go ahead and just look at, oops, let me just take a look at this, our first example here. This rule, you can kind of think of it in a little bit more broader way, okay? So here I have x to the negative 10th, when I move, um, when I want to make that positive, it's just 1 over x to the 10th, just as this particular rule applies. But x to the negative 10th, if I said, what's that as a fraction? What's x to the negative 10th as a fraction? In other words, how do I represent it as a fraction? Well, you can represent any value as a fraction by putting it over 1, like so. Okay? So that's, we wouldn't write x to the negative 10th over 1. It's just too cumbersome. It's just like, hey, how do we write the number 5 as a fraction? Well, it's 5 over 1. Okay, that's, that's the fraction. You know, if you want to think of it as a fraction, that's how we would do it. So kind of, if you're lost, just kind of stick with me for a second. So here I have x to the negative 10th. If I want to see that as a fraction once again, just put that over 1. So now if you see the pattern of what's going on here, is this. When we have a 
power with a negative exponent, really this rule is stating the following. If you want to make that negative exponent positive, all you have to do is move it to the opposite side of the fraction bar. Okay, so here I have x negative tenth in the numerator. If I just put it down in, put that whole power down into the denominator, the power, or excuse me, the exponent becomes positive. All right, so if I have two to the negative fifth, let's actually do it this way one over two to the negative fifth and I want to make that positive well if I just take this whole thing and move it upstairs move it to the opposite side of the fraction bar it becomes positive two to the fifth okay so let's take a look at this example x to the negative seventh over y to the negative tenth so now I have a negative exponent once in a numerator and ones in the denominator. So if I just take this whole power, rewrite it down here, that negative exponent becomes positive. And likewise, if I take this and move it upstairs, the negative exponent goes away. So here, I would, it would just be equivalent to y to the positive tenth over x to the positive seventh. Okay, so the rule really here, eighth and negative n over one over uh, one uh, over a to the n, okay, if I just put this over 1, is stating the following. When you have a negative exponent, if you just put it to the opposite side of the fraction bar, the negative exponent goes away. So just a quick tutorial. Certainly you need um, a lot of practice, and this has to be taken in context with all the other rules with properties of exponents. But, you know, those, uh, those negative exponents are everywhere in algebra, and you definitely got to master them. Anyways, uh, hopefully this uh, little video helps you out. If you're not familiar with Tablet Class or my instruction, come on over to our site, tabletclass.com. Um, primarily have uh, homeschool math courses. Other people use our, our programs, but if you're a homeschooler and you need a full uh, curriculum for an awesome price, then you definitely want to check out our free demo. All right, so thanks for watching. Have a great day.